for for almost all of our videos, we are we're always trying something new, whether it's the technology involved in the video, or you know, sometimes it even bleeds over into the way we distribute the video, or you know, the way the the video can be experienced. And we just we had never tried anything with Facebook, and it seemed like you know another place where people go to watch videos, and it seemed like an interesting community to try to tap into and to have share the video. I, I guess we just wanted to try something new and try something different. I see it's just been released on Vivo through YouTube. Yeah. Have you had the same response? It's hard to tell. You know, I mean, it 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 went on Vivo several you know several days after the premiere of it on Facebook, and so you know Facebook is certainly where the initial sort of boom happened. It's like, it's doing okay on Vivo, but it's, it's, it's really hard to tell because in our experience, it's like, you know, the first, or at least these days, the first 24 to 48 hours are oftentimes when you get just like that, that huge surge of numbers and, you know, and everybody's passing it around. But things move so quickly online these days that it's like, you know, once you get to about 72 hours, it's like, you know, the several things are, uh, you know, next se several viral things are, are already kind of like rolling in. So, you know, li life online is shorter than it used to be. I mean, you know, I remember Here It Goes Again was, you know, the the sort of first like viral video, I guess, of ours that we, we self-directed and put out into the world. Or I guess, sorry, I should say it's the second. First was uh, A Million Ways to Be Cruel. Right. But, you know, I remember in the those days for both A Million Ways to Be Cruel and then, and then for Here It Goes Again, you know, the life of those videos lasted weeks into months almost and and the, and these days it's really like you got about 48 hours yeah you know? everything's kind of and, like and, a meme sized bites of stuff yeah exactly so it, you know it's it's hard it's hard to really tell how well something is doing on any given platform these days but you know it, it, it at least on, on certainly on facebook you know we, we could see in those 48 hours i mean we we got a lot you know we got really big numbers it moved several times faster than any video we've ever put out before so for Upside Down and Inside Out, we did 21 flights over the course of three weeks. Each flight did 15 parabolas, you know, so the, the plane does that motion. So it goes up, you experience double gravity, and then it goes over and drops you. And then for about 27 seconds, you're weightless as it comes down. And then after 27 seconds, it picks you back up again. And you're back in double gravity for about 10 seconds. And then it levels off. And then you're back in normal gravity. And, and then it takes about five minutes for it to circle around and gain the speed to go back up again to do the next parabola. So I think, God, I, I think we did somewhere right around 300 parabolas, which, oh is roughly, which is roughly like... You know, somewhere around two and a half hours of, of waitlist time in all. We, we went to Moscow to do this, and the cosmonauts we were working with, who are, who are our trainers, you know, they do like 10 flights a year. And I, I think they do like 10 parabolas or something like that. And we, you know, we did 20 flights in three weeks, 15 parabolas a piece. So, you know, they do a lot more training outside of that we ever did. But, you know, like flying time, waitlist time, um, I feel like we're we're somewhat prepped to go to outer space. <laughs> <laughs> how many flights of those were rehearsals, and how many flights were used in the final take? Yeah, that's a good question. So, so the first week was six flights, and that was just all play time and getting used to the feeling of zero gravity and figuring out what toothpaste looked like in zero gravity, figuring out what like soda looked like in in zero gravity, and what what a bunch of colorful balls would look like floating around, and, and then us just trying to like figure out how we could get our balance up there and and do some moves that seemed, you know, intriguing and, and fun. So that was, we spent an entire week just testing things out basically and playing and just being in the situation. Cause this is the, this is like most of our videos, you really can't start brainstorming for real until you're actually like in the situation. You have to be in the situation and see what works and see what doesn't. Cause it's impossible to brainstorm at a desk what's going to be awesome in zero G, you know? <laughs> yeah. That was the first week. And then we went home to Los Angeles for about 10 days, reviewed the footage, figured out what worked and what didn't work. And then on the ground in LA, tried to put some semblance of a video together based on the moves that we knew we wanted to try once we were back up in the plane. We broke the song and video up into eight scenes. So we'd be able to shoot it uh, in eight parabolas. There was a tricky element involved, which is that each period of, of uh, weightlessness is 27 seconds. And right. so and we had an issue where the verse of our song and the chorus of our song 
ran at about 21 seconds a piece. There was some time discrepancy as far as being able to take advantage of the entire 27 seconds because because our song at any given time, if we wanted to be musical, worked in 21 second chunks. So we actually had to slow the song down about 28%. So that, and so that we could take full advantage of the 27 seconds of weightlessness. So that was like a really tricky math problem that had to be figured out. For each parabola, we were able to take full advantage of the 27 seconds of weightlessness. We had to tweak some things, but uh, actually a lot, a lot of what we thought would work did work. You know, we figured out a way that we could shoot this somewhat consistently. And we didn't really start getting it until really the last day, to be honest with you. We, we have takes that are, you know, so-so from all the days before, but really we, we didn't start getting it until that Friday. And the take that made it is, is literally the last take we did. We, we had gotten a really good second to last take, except that paint from the final scene got on the camera, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so which, which kind of ruined the full take of it. So we decided to try one more time, and we were able to get one more flight where, where they allowed us to do eight more parabolas and and so we and we just miraculously got it in in that final eight each flight ran about 45 minutes or so in all uh you know from from takeoff to landing and uh what we would do is you know we had 15 parabolas in each flight so we would do a rehearsal we'd rehearse the first seven scenes and then the plane would fly around for about 10 minutes we would reset the plane having not done the final paint scene because paint you know the final scene paint gets everywhere in the in the the, the plane is soaked. So we'd, we'd reset the dry plane and then and then run a take. And then, you know, and then the plane would land and we'd get out and they would clean it and try to dry it as best they could. It never really fully dried. It was always kind of damp and cold in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I, I, yeah, miraculously, we, we just, we, that, you know, we got that magical last take. How did you mm. not get sick? Or did you get sick? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a good question. Yeah, so, you know, the, the one thing, the one thing that the, uh, I, I was not really super prepared for is uh, before you go into zero G, you're in double G, which is basically like feeling like twice your body weight come down on you. It's an it's incredibly uncomfortable feeling. And you feel that as you're going up, and then it drops you, and then you're weightless, but then it catches you, and you're back in double gravity again. So you feel that at two times a parabola. <laughs> yeah. um, and the very, fir- the very first flight we did, I just wasn't prepared for that at all. And when I start, you know, the first time I went in double gravity... I, I thought my brain was going to explode or something. Like that. <laughs> just, you know, it's just such an incredible amount of pressure coming down on you. And, you know, there's there's ways to negotiate the gravity better than I knew at the time. You know, like if you lay down, it, it, laying down is kind of sort of the best way to negotiate the way all that weight is coming down on you. But if you're sort of like sitting up like or kneeling or standing up, it's just an incredibly, incredibly difficult way to withstand double gravity. Um, that made me feel incredibly nauseous. And I don't know how I didn't throw up on that first flight because I was taking a very low dosage of anti-nausea medicine because I didn't think I needed that much. And I was green, no <laughs> doubt. I was green. I, I really was like, I was ill. Um, and I actually had to skip the next two flights because I, I just hadn't like shaken off the illness feeling, but I didn't throw up. And actually, no one in the band threw up. But uh, but a lot of the crew around us threw up. A lot of like the production crew threw up, and that was that was gnarly to see. That was definitely gnarly. Uh, but you know, but we knew it was going to be part of the experience. I mean, any anyone I told before we did this that I was going up, they're like, "The vomit comet? You going to the vomit comet, dude? You're going to barf. You're going to barf a lot." You know. Um, and and I never did. I never did throw up. So the the way playback worked. Uh, on on any given parabola was that uh, the pilots in the plane would radio to one of the trainers, and then the trainer would then tell the play our playback guy Roman. You know when we were when we were five seconds away from being weightless, we would be going up, and then in double gravity, the pilot would call the trainer. Trainer would tell Roman. Ramon then on cue every time he was given about a five second warning and then he would hit playback and then we had a countdown so it'd be like five four three two one and then the music would play and as soon as the music started we would then go into motion and and do 27 seconds worth of choreography at the end of that 27 seconds we would then return to wherever the choreography took us and then we would have to sit frozen uh, in double gravity and then in normal gravity for about three to five minutes while the pilots were circling around and gaining speed to go back up again. 
Uh, at that point, they would go back up in double gravity. Five seconds before weightlessness, the pilot would then again, you know, call on radio to the trainer. The trainer would tell Ramon. Ramon would hit play. Countdown would go, and we would go back up again. And uh, and so we ended up doing that um, for, you know, for eight scenes worth. And then, you know, afterwards, we sped ramp and, and cut out the, the boring parts, basically, the parts where we were just sitting there frozen, waiting to go back into zero-G again. And that's that's basically how it works. 